feel him changing situations, changing impossible situations, turning things around that did not make sense. I feel, and I hear the Lord saying, will you just trust me and obey? I hear the Lord saying, will you just trust me and obey me? I hear him saying, will you just trust me and obey me? Do not look to the left. Do not look to the right. My God, to the left. Do not look to the left. Do not look to the right. Let me give you that scripture. Proverbs 4 and 27. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your feet from evil. The 26th verse says, make a level path for your feet and all your ways will be sure. Make a level path. Father God, how do we, how do we make a level path? How do we make a level path for our feet? By obeying and trusting you. My God, that's what he is saying to it. You're going to make a level path for your feet. My God, let me look that up in the message Bible. You're going to make a level path for your feet by trusting and obeying him. Father God, forgive us. <laughs> Holy Spirit, help us with our unbelief in any ways we don't trust and obey you. My God, my God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word this morning. My God, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to read Proverbs 5 out of the Message Bible. It says, Dear friend, pay close attention to this, my wisdom. Listen very closely to the way I see it. Then you'll acquire a taste for good sense. When I, what I tell you will keep you out of trouble. The lips of a seductive woman are oh so sweet. Her soft words are oh so smooth. But it won't be long before she's gravel in your mouth, a pain in your gut, a wound in your heart. She's dancing down the perfume path to death. She's headed straight for hell and taking you with her. She hasn't a clue about real life, about who she is. <laughs> Oh, 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 thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. She hasn't a clue about real life or about who she is or about where she's going. So my friend, listen closely. Don't treat my words casually. I hear you, Holy Spirit. Keep your distance from such a woman. Absolutely stay out of her neighborhood. You do not want to squander your wonderful life to waste your precious life among the hard hearted. Why should you allow strangers to take advantage of you? My God, somebody needed this answer this morning. Why be exploited by those who care nothing for you? You don't want to end your life full of regrets. Nothing but sin and bones saying, oh, why didn't I do what they told me? Why didn't I do what they told me? Why did I reject a disciplined life? Why didn't I listen to my mentors? Woo. Okay, Holy Ghost. Why did not listen to my mentors or take my teachers seriously? My life is ruined. I haven't one blessed thing to show for my life. This is the 15th and the 16th verse. It says, do you know the same drink from your own rain barrel? My God, draw water from your own spring fed well. It's true. Otherwise, you may one day come home and find your barrel empty and your well polluted. Your spring water is for you and you only, not to be passed around among strangers. Bless your a fresh flowing fountain. Enjoy the wife you married as a young man, lovely as an angel, beautiful as a rose. Don't ever quit taking delight in her body. Never take her love for granted. Why would you trade enduring intimacies for treat cheap thrills with a prostitute, for dalliance with a pros promiscuous stranger? Mark well that God doesn't miss a move you make. <laughs> that he's aware of every step you take. The shadow of your sin will overtake you. You'll find yourself stumbling all over yourself in the dark. Death is the reward of an un 
disciplined life. Your foolish decisions trap you in a dead end. Let me go to the Amplified. My God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word. We will not be wise in our own eyes. My God, we're going to have to spend, I might spend some time studying this. Thank you, Father, for your word. Let us not be foolish. Let us not lean into our own understanding. Father God, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So it says, drink water from your own cistern of a pure marriage relationship. But you also have to remember that we are the bride of Christ. This isn't just about a marriage. There's a depth to this. And you got to ask, you got to ask, God, this is about the, this is about a call to marital fidelity. This is definitely about a call to marital fidelity. But you need to ask the Holy Spirit, if I'm not married, show me how this pertains to me right now in this season. Right now, and I hear the Lord saying, "We are the bride of Christ. We are the bride. We are the bride of Christ. We are to be in a pure relationship with him as well." My God, we are the bride. We are the bride. We are the bride. Our marriage is to him. We are the bride. We are. Let me give you that scripture. We are the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. I hear you this morning, Lord. I hear you this morning. I hear you. I, I hear you, Lord God. I hear you. I hear how intentional you're being with us this morning. We are the bride of Christ. Revelations 19, 7 and 9 said, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made him herself ready. And to her, it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright for the fine linen in the righteous acts of the saint. Then he said to me, right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the lamb. And he said, these are true sayings. Blessed are you who are called to the marriage supper of lambs. Blessed are, that's Revelations 19 and 7 and 9. And we were reading out of Proverbs 5. And so we're back on the 15th verse. He's saying, drink water from your own cistern, a pure marriage relationship. My God, a pure marriage relationship with Christ. I hear you, Lord. A pure marriage relationship with God. My God. It says, should your springs be this and fresh running water from your own well should your springs and he talks about here your children be dispersed as streams of water in the streets confine yourself to your own wife let your children be yours alone and not the children of strangers with you that's talking about infidelity you can deal with that personally and then it says let your fountain your wife be blessed with the rewards of fidelity and rejoice in the wife of your youth right but if we are the bride of the church if we are the bride of Christ there has to be a purity in our relationship with God. My God, there's some depth to this. That's why I tell you, it's some depth. It's some depth. It's some depth. It's some depth to this. Yes, Stephanie, it's some depth to this. God is calling us home. God is calling us into a pure of relationship with him. Holy Spirit, have your way. Second Corinthians 11, 2 says, for I am jealous for you. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy for I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste version to Christ. I don't want you to have no other God before me. I don't want you to have no other God before me. I don't want any other relationship in your life to mean more to you than I do. I don't want any other relationship. I don't want anything. He said, I don't want anything. I don't want anything. Jeremiah 3 and 8, it says, Then I saw for all causes for which backsliding Israel had committed adultery, right? I'm just proving to you that we are the bride of Christ. For any of you who've never really heard that or understood the depth of our relationship, it says, Then I saw that for all causes for which backsliding Israel had committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but went and played the harlot also. Lord God, open the eyes of our understanding. Open the eyes of our understanding. Then Ezekiel 16, 8 and 14 says, When I passed by you again and looked upon you, indeed in your time was the time of love. So I spread my, my wings over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I swore an oath to you and entered in a covenant with you. And be, you became mine, says the Lord God. And when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we become his. See, this is the kind of word that's going to heal us. This is the kind of word that's going to restore 
us. This is the kind of word that shifts us into the mind of Christ. This is the kind of word that shifts us into kingdom thinking so that we don't live any less than you are the bride of Christ. You are supposed to be blameless. I'm not talking about perfect. I'm not talking about righteous acts. I'm talking about you are supposed to be blameless. He says, so he says, he says, then I washed in your eyes. I thoroughly washed off your blood and I anointed you with oil. I clothed you in embroidered cloth and gave you sandals of badger skin. I clothed you with fine linen and covered you with slip. I adorned you with ornaments, put bracelets on your wrists and a chain on your neck. And I put a jewel in your nose and earrings in your ear and a beautiful crown on your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver and your clothing of fine linen silk and embroidered cloth you are you ate pastry of fine flour honey and oil you were exceedingly beautiful and succeeded to royalty your fame went out among the nations because of your beauty for it was perfect through my splendor which i had bestowed upon you lord god my god god longs to make us perfect in his splendor. That's it, nay. That's it. Renew us, Lord God. Restore us, Lord God. Thank you for it. Yes, Stephanie. Thank you for our unconditional love. Thank you for your unconditional love. Ephesians 5 and 26 said that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word. My God, that he may sing. That's why this word is so important. That's why this time with God is so important. That's why we cannot lean into our own understanding. We got to begin to acknowledge him in all our ways. We got to be able to acknowledge him in our health. We got to begin to acknowledge him in our finances. We got to begin to acknowledge him in our relationships. We got to say, Daddy God, have your way in my life and really allow him to have his way. Not religious things, not church stuff, not all that stuff. Father God, have your way and like let him lead us and have your way. And then Ephesians 5 and 32 says, this is a great mystery. History, but I'm speaking concerning Christ and the church. This is a great mystery. Remember, we go back over to Corinthians. That's our springboard scripture for this devotional, right? We go back into scripture. You're not going to know this by your flesh. You're only going to know this by the spirit. And so you have to begin to ask the Lord. That's why you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why you need to desire the evidence of speaking in tongues so you can begin to pray the mystery. It helps you. It empowers you. No, I got to, Lord, I need you to reveal this to me because this is the thing. That's what the word said. It says, Ephesians 5 and 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, by the word. Revelations 21 and 2 says, then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's how important you are to God. And you may not even understand it. I'm a bride. You may not even understand it. Ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I need you to help me understand this language. I need you to un help me understand this relationship. And then go back into Proverbs 5 and meditate on this. This ain't a one shot hit and keep moving. Go back and meditate on this. Because if I don't understand this, then I'm going to re resist you as a good shepherd. If I don't understand I'm your bride. If I don't understand that we're the church, right? Not the building. If I don't understand we're the church, if I don't understand that when I'm doing harm to others, I'm really doing harm to God. If I don't get revelation of all of this in my mind, then I will keep on as business as usual. And I know for a fact we are in a season where we cannot afford to do business as usual. You cannot you cannot, so you gotta buy the eye salve. You gotta buy the you gotta buy the eye salve. You gotta buy it. You gotta buy the eye salve. You gotta ask him for ears to hear. You gotta remember that you are not, you are it's 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 not I get I get to return. I get to return. Y'all know how I love to say this. I get to return to my original factory reset. God gets to reset me and I get to return. He is the potter. I am the clay. I am on his will. I get to be washed, renewed in the word, and I get to return to how he originally crafted me, how he originally created me. My God. And then he washes me in the word. Yes, 
Father God is washing us in the word. He will continue to wash us. He restores us. We do not restore ourselves. He strengthens us. We don't strengthen ourselves. We offer him our weakness and he does the rest. And he does the rest. And then he places us and positions us in, in our, um, in our, into our mountain of fluence. Then we go do the work. Some of y'all been trying to do stuff. Can I say this? Okay, no. The Holy Spirit told me not to say that yet. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I will obey and honor you. Go back. So go back and read this as God washes you and resets you in the word and ask him, Lord, show me, um, show me where I'm not taking godly wisdom. Show me where I have not been listening to my mentors. Show me where I have not been listening to the teachers. Show me, show me where I haven't been using discretion. Show me, show me those that you've placed before me and I haven't been obeying what, um, what you've given me. Show me, take me back to the place where you gave us instructions for an altar. Take me back to the place of where you gave us instructions to honor you in our time and our deed. But remove me from anything that may be hindering my way. Father God, help me so that I'm not pious and too righteous to think that I can't receive from someone else. Help me deal with the issues in my heart that have me hardened, Lord God. In which I'm not, I'm not listening to what the word says. I'm not listening to those that you have put before me because um, I feel like I know better than them. Help me, Father God, in this because you're clearing your word today to tell me that I need to stay connected. I need to listen to my mentors. I need to take my teachers seriously, right? Because the next part of that after that says my life has been ruined. God sends us mentors and teachers um, who have words and who are called to strengthen us, who God's called to them to this level to teach, who God's called them to the nations, who's called to prophesy over your life, who's called to put, and haughtiness and pride will tell you not to listen to them. I'm just following the instructions of the Lord this morning. Haughtiness and pride will tell you don't listen to them. Haughtiness and, well, the Lord speaks to me myself, but God, like go back for everybody that's been on this devotional, go back to October to the instructions that he gave us. Have we been following all of the instructions God gave us? It's better to obey than sacrifice. Um, Samuel told Saul that when he only part followed part of, of God's instructions. Have I been willing to obey everything you've asked me? Am I the willing and I am I the obedient? And if I am not the willing and I am not the obedient, then I need to repent. <laughs> I need to repent. I need to go back to the place where I repent. And I think about all the little things God has been telling you to go do along the way, like telling you to be quiet, telling you to get up, telling you to sow, um, telling you to come out of certain relationships, all the things, things that the word of the Lord that, 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 that the Lord has brought us even here on the devotional and said, follow these instructions, do these, don't look to the left, don't look to the right, because there's fruit that's supposed to produce after that. Go back to all the instructions. And if you cannot remember, ask the Holy Spirit, help me remember everything God has been telling me. God was reminding me. Can I say that? Yes, Lord. God was reminding me this morning that he gave me a particular um, book in the Bible, he wanted me to start studying and I've been studying other things. And I said, Lord, I had to repent today. And he said, I wanted you studying this for a particular reason. And I, I said, Lord, forgive me this, right? Cause I'm studying all the time. He said, but this needed to be a priority. Like when I give you something, when I say something to you, Lakeisha, this is like a priority. This needs to be a priority. And so I had to come back and repent and I had to be like, Lord, forgive me for prioritizing and putting other things before you because I already know I've probably wasted some time somewhere in which I probably could have done this and made this a priority. Like made, made, made a priority, not involve, not involve some of the instructions, but all, all because there, there, when we imbibe, obey the instructions, right? Isaiah one over there, it says, we're going to eat the fruit of the land. So let me pray this over you. And then we're going to get, get back to this. And then we repent for making excuses because many times we make excuses of why we don't 
we make excuses of why we shouldn't. Um, we, we just use a lot of excuses all the time. All the time we justify and use excuses for why we cannot obey, obey God. But here's what I know about the Lord. My God. And I'm speaking about the Lord. It's like, here's what I know about the Lord. When we make a decision to obey him, then he works out all the in-between. Like he works out all the in-between. Like you don't, when God is calling you into something or asking you to do something, you don't have to worry about the provision. You don't have to worry about the protection. You don't have to worry about the people. Your only job is to obey what God is saying, to trust him, and God will do the rest. Like God will absolutely do the rest. Okay, Lord, you're telling me to do this. Let me do this, and then God will do the rest. Please stay tuned for this week's announcements. Oh, oh. Johnson, also known as LMJ, is an evangelist, teacher, entrepreneur, mentor, author, trainer, and community advocate. She is the founder of LMJ Ministries and CEO of LMJ Inc., a printing, publishing, and consulting firm. Lakeisha self-published her first book in April 2019, entitled The Launch, a book for anyone who wants to start anything. She is the host of Coffee and Conversations, a digital interactive daily devotional on 11 podcast outlets, including Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Facebook Live, YouTube, and Instagram. She's been heard in over 40 countries. She is the creator and host for Pillow Talk, an exclusive event created by women, especially for women. Lakeisha is mission-minded. She is focused on serving God by serving others. If you had to describe her in one word, it would be tenacious. Lakeisha believes in order to impact our communities and make significant impact, a person should be actively engaged in service and or entrepreneurship and love. Lakeisha's famous quote is, Go be loved today. Ladies and gentlemen, Lakeisha M. Johnson.